All right, so let's get on with these. Um, create some extra features. We actually did that, a controversial suggestion. We made so we could clear the countries. So let's do the other optionals here. We need to sort the products. So choosing one of the sorting methods should update the shown order of the products. There's an array called sort, array method called sort. Find documentation about it and see if you can get it to work. And then use the render products function. So what can we choose here? We can choose cheap first, expensive first, or name, um, which in the HTML corresponds to cheap, expensive, and name, which means we need to select inside this sort. Uh, so going back to the JavaScript, how do we do that? Because this is the same, but yeah, what do we write here? Okay. And let's call this one uh, instead. That's okay. All right. So what do we do down here? Add the event. And change. All right, and then we need to sort somehow. Mm. And but, we can make a map for the but we still probably need to be able to handle the search here. Uh, we still need to remember that, so let's try to get that in right away. So how about we just add another parameter up here called sort? Yeah. How we use that, we'll figure out in a moment. But um, so then we can do search for products. Dot value country select dot value that's still the same as we've always done and what should it be here it should be um, sort I think those mm -hmm. all right so now we up here if we have a sort so if we have a sort of some sort um, then we it said according to the documentation that we could just there's a function called sort here that we can call but we need to tell it how to sort and what to sort. And there's three things we can sort on. We can sort on it being cheap, we can sort on things being expensive, and we can sort on the name. And in this case, I would actually go with a switch uh, or some sort of if-else structure for this because we need slightly different sorting functions. Um, so if it's we're sorting cheap, then we can do matching products to sort. And then, what should I give this sort? It's not, no, we can just like, uh, ah, yeah. Return. Now, return is implicitly done because we don't have curly brackets here right now. No, so the, 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 the condition is like, uh, if A uh, bigger than B. Well, A even though this intelligence yeah. is really wrong, A is a product right now. So A is not just a number. We can't really say yeah, one product is bigger than the other product. And the price. Yes. Mm. But And then we need to return a number from this. So the recommended way of doing that is actually subtracting them from each other. Because what sort does, it says that if we get zero, they're the same. If we get something above zero, that means I think A was bigger than B, and if we get something below zero, that means B was bigger than A, or A was smaller than B. I always get these in the wrong order, so we'll be correcting them afterwards. So if it is expensive, matching product of sort, A, B, what do you think we should do now? Now we just need to sort them in the other direction. Yep, entirely correct. Because that'll give us the opposite results always. Yeah. So that that's exactly right. Uh, and we need a break here, or we'll get some really really funky results. And then we have name. I think that was the last option. Mm -hmm. So matching product sort. Comma B. Yep. 
I actually think this will work. I recall something about this technically being allowed in JavaScript, subtracting strings. It's not minus, like from A to B, I think. Would that sort that alphabetically? Actually, yeah, I th that's why I'm saying I recall there's being something about that. A minus B, A minus B, that would be alphabetically, wouldn't it? Yeah, but that's also what we want in case of the names. The thing is that, so that's value. Oh, so what they do, MDN actually does this. So they do this, oh, let me just make it big enough for you to read. So they actually have an example here of where we're sorting by name. So they're converting it, in this case, all to uppercase. Um, and then saying, well, if A is smaller than B, so I was remembering wrong. This is why we check the documentation, guys. So that, that, paste in that. So that should hopefully sort them. But that we also need then to update this. Sort select dot value. And again up here. So why is it matter here? Statement expected. Is that parenthesis wrong? All right, let's see if this works. So let's just explicitly select something. So expensive first. I think this one is the price. So that seems about right. Cheap first. Seems about right. And name. So that's also sorted alphabetically as we wanted. So that's all well and good. So there's actually one thing I would like to do is that right now wait it's actually not doing a sort when we start and that would be nice wouldn't it so rather than calling just directly render products here we can call search for products we just say i don't care about the name i really don't care about the country and i want it to be sorted by name by default As you can see, it's sorted now alphabetically out of box, which is really confusing, but we clearly selected cheap up there. So let's go with uh, cheap as the first one. And then they're sorted by price. So that also means it's consistent if we do a search and then clear it again, which it wouldn't have been before. This is one of the minor things that as you get better at this, that you'll start noticing uh, happen where Things need to be consistent, otherwise it will annoy people. Mm -hmm. And they don't know why it annoys them, they just know that it annoys them. So next part, adding a shopping cart. What, what, was, the, what was the consistency there? Because he selected cheap. So um, notice if we just do render products. They just come, come, on, come on random. Yeah completely random but then notice now that it has right now it has fantastic computer first so if I just search and then then it doesn't have it first oh yeah but I would expect that given a search I would always get the same thing yeah and then giving not having a search I would still get the same thing yeah it will do like some sort of a default yeah um, and that's not happening so that's why we do this instead. So we actually just always search. We just don't search for anything. So then it's consistent. All right, the next one. Doing a shopping cart. When clicking the Add to Cart button for products, the product should be added to the LI found under the section with the class name Cart. The product should be added as an LI item like this. So going back to the HTML, we have cart, this LI, which we need to find so we can add things to it. 
Um, someone who can remember task three, do we have to do total price in number three or not? Okay, let's just do that here then. So first thing first, finding that UL, how would we do that? And then we need to be able to click on the entire row to add it to the card. So the suggested way, according to the homework, is that we can just add an event listener here. So we say, all right, when we click on that row li, do something. And well, what do we want to do? We want to, let's just create a separate function for it, add product to cart. Um, product and let's create an array here that has our card products in card. I'm probably making this way more complicated than it needs to be, but that's because I'm thinking of a partial exercise for it after. Um, all right, so add products to card product. So now we're just moving the exercise to another function. So products in card push product and just like we have a function for rendering products it would probably also be nice if we had a function for rendering the card let's just take the card all right now let's just log out what's in there Whenever we do that. So now I should be able to click on an item and add it to a card, and that does not work at all. Okay. Why not? Interesting. Good old console lock debugging. If it doesn't work, just start writing out random stuff. So it gets that far. <laughs> Functions tends to work better when you call them. Turns out. So, all right. So now I added milk to my card. Then I want to add in a toothbrush. And now I have both milk and a toothbrush. So we're just keeping what's in our card in an array just outside to remember what's there. So if we want to render it, we should probably just start by clearing out the card UL like we're doing below. Then we can make a for loop of all the items in the card. So remember how I told you to try doing small parts, don't do everything in one go. So let's just check if we get things correctly looped at least. All right, so we're rendering one item in the card, then we're rendering two items in the card. Three, all right, that seems to work. Then we need, yes? It says here that we need to add the card button. When clicking, yep, so that, that's, the confusing here, there is no add to cart button, as far as I can see. I may have missed it, but as far as I can see, there is not. Is it okay with create? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, but according to what I can read down here, they probably just expect us to be able to click on the LI. Um, so to, that's why I think we have done it uh, like this, where I just add an event to the entire row rather than having a button beside it. All right, then we need to uh, write out some items. So it should be an li with some divs inside. So row li, we have done this dance before. Li and then 
what you want to depend child row ally and then we need to we can actually still use our no we can't because we want it to be in a div this time around so we want a div with a class of name and we want a div with a class of price inside that li we just created. So uh, name div which should have a class with, of name and the text should be the product.name. And then we need to add it to our row li. And then we need to do the exact same thing for price. Price, price, yes. So now it should actually be putting things in our cart when we click. So as you can see, we get items in here now as intended. Would probably also be fun if we printed out the total price. Let me just get to the correct one. So for the total price, as you can see, they have a class of total, which they just so happen to be nice and put a span here for us to print values into. Isn't that nice of them? So how do we get that total span? Select to span. So just do this? No. No. It should be first with plus. Yeah. Plus. Yeah. Plus first. Yeah. Plus total. Um, because if we just did span, like how many would we get? Just All right. Let's literally, literally only those. Yeah. Okay. That would not break anything. But in a normal page, you have like ten thousand of these. Yeah. So don't just query on the span in this case. All right. Then down here. We, as we are doing... Um, I have a question. Yes. Uh, that, 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 that goes into the uh, CSS um, hierarchy. What if the div has more than one class? Then we could... Like, if there was another class here? Yeah. That would still work fine. Mm -hmm. Our selector in there. We don't so need. We select any of them. It would work. Or you you, you, do, you don't select? need to do this. Like adding total dot another up here. It just need. It just says, find something with a class of total. That would be this div. Inside that, find a span. So it doesn't matter the CSS order then. No, no. I, like this would also be fine. Okay. But in here. Um, this would not work. No work. If that's what you're asking. No, no, no. I was asking. I was asking you because it's often we're only seeing one one class here for for each the element. But you know, more often than not, that we have like three, four, yeah. five classes. On and at that point, name. I would not be using class names with query select. I would be using IDs. IDs. Um, because usually, when you're doing this, you're aiming for something very, very specific. Okay. You're not aiming for whatever that has this class is something we say this is reusable. It, class is kind of like a function in CSS. So we can say apply this function to this div, apply this styling to this div using this class. Um, and we might have multiple things with the same class because we might, like in this case, each of these each each of these row could reasonably have a class called row. That would be completely fine and normal. Um, but in that case, it wouldn't make sense to ask for dot .row. Yeah. Because which one do we get? Uh, who knows? What we can do is we can do query select all. And that will get us an array of everything in the list, in the page that matches this. OK. So then then on, that, on that way, you would have to match both of them? It still have to match both of them. Okay. This, this okay. still have to match both all of this. No, because this is actually one thing. It's not both of them. It's all of it. Um, because you can also do like div total. That's still just one thing. Find a div that has a class of total. 
In this case, we're saying find a span inside a class, something with a class of total. Um, and if we just did all, we'd just say find all of them on the page. Document or query selector just says find the first one for us. So back to making the total for the card. Did you get your... Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so when we're doing things like totals and such, we usually just sum up along the way. So in this case, we could just create one called sum that when we start out, it's zero because eh, there's nothing. Wait, not there. Yeah, but now you also have to, uh, you also have to be able to remove stuff from, from, from the cart and update the total at the same time. Yeah, that would probably also make sense to add a remove function in here. Um, so down here, we probably have the total sum right now. Total sum. So I add in things, and it gives me a total sum of that. So we just need to write that out. So total span in a text is equal to sum. Boom. And then if we just add things in here, as you can see, the price goes up. So that's basically how we would do a shopping cart. Should we try to make remove from card too? Yeah, of course. That would be nice. Yeah. But there's like, yeah, I just remember something about uh, removing this thing. The what? The removing. Remove this, how we can do that? That was my question. Yeah, so, um, so like in this concrete case, or just how we can remove something no, from an array? No, um, So there's a couple of different ways to do it. Um, assuming you have an array called array, you can do splice, I think it is, um, where you can give it, all right, remove whatever is at position four and exactly one item. And that'll remove it from us, for us. Um, another way, which is once we get into something a bit more, something called functional programming, is that assuming you have, you would actually create a new array. So you'll have some new array is equal to an existing array where we filter, so value, we say, all right, keep the value only if it's not thing to be removed. And that'll actually get us a new, new array without that item. Mm -hmm. um, for what you're doing here, that is way overkill. But once you get into really, really big applications where these array are split over hundreds of different HTML elements and several different people are working on them at the same time and the page is updating all over the place, it gets really nice because you can have something called race conditions where multiple things are trying to update at the array at the same time. So you noticed how I had to do in splice, I have to provide an, a start index. Mm -hmm. So what if I said, I found out it was not position four, but before I managed to remove it, Something, yeah, someone added something before this element, so now I remove the wrong thing. That would be bad. And I suddenly deleted the wrong item from your shopping cart. That would not be fun. That's why that filter, because then you're not changing the existing array, you're just making a new one. So then whoever is messing with the existing array can just keep messing with that, you don't care anymore. You just, you got a new array to play with. My question was not about the array, about uh, the listener. Oh, so how to remove an event listener? Yeah. All right. So um, in this case, let's say we wanted to remove this input event listener for some reason. If you want to do that, we actually need to create, that's two kind of ways. But the general way I do it is that we need to create a function outside. So on input, that does something. And then rather than passing in a, an anonymous function there, we can just, we give it on input like this. The reason why we need to do that is because remove event listener. It takes the event to remove from and the specific callback to remove. So if I had just done that, then there's no way I can access this thing here so I can remove it. So that's why I would need to create it outside. Mm, yeah, that's why it was not working. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's a bit, it's a bit complicated, and in my opinion, absolutely stupid. 
uh, that HTML does it this way, but what can you do? That's how they built the system. Mm. What some people end up doing is add, creating their own custom add event listener, so they can just say remove event listener input, and then it remembers all the functions that was added and then removes them again for you. But it is considerably more advanced. And I think, is there a JavaScript 2 module or something? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, uh, no, yeah, oh, sorry. Um, you will have a course on React later on, if I'm correct. Yeah. yeah. That was the one I was trying to refer to. You'll be getting much more into the um, ways of dealing with events that doesn't require you to do all this manual work. Mm -hmm. React has a completely different way of doing it. Um, some people like it that way, some people don't. Uh, it's personal preference. So. so now I have the sum. Now we want to remove things again. So we can do the row li at event listener. So whenever we click on something in the basket, we just want to remove it from the function or from the cart. So um, let's actually just do it like this products in cart, splice. We already have the index we need from up here, so we can just give it i and then say remove one item and then uh, render cart, products in cart. And that should, if everything works, it totally didn't because this is still here. Yes. So I can still add things to my shopping cart and I can click on them to remove them. Some of you have asked what's the difference between var and let several times. This is a really good lesson in why var sucks and is probably not what you want. So if I add in some items here, what do you think will happen if I Left click on the used Nokia right now. Yeah, no, no, uh, it'll it'll not add anything, but uh, cats, right? It'll remove milk. Or in this case, it just won't work at all, which is a whole other problem. Yeah, it won't work at all um, because. Uh, So what is the value of i at that point? That's really the uh, what it comes back to here. So i is 3. If we do this with a let. Then it actually remembers what i was in that round of the loop. So that's a really, really important distinction between let and var. Let is what we call block scoped. So that means inside this scope, it's that thing. Outside the scope and in the next round of the loop, it's technically a new scope. So it's a new thing. But the old one still works as it was before, um, which makes things like these much easier. And var is accessible by, by the global scope. Yeah, that's, be, that's because what happens with var is it says, all right, you have a var i, let me just move it out here for you. Yeah. Make it a <laughs> exactly. Um, and then you have all sorts of problems. That's, that's smart. <laughs> I know. That's stupid. But that's how they decided. That's why they introduced let. Const is the same way, but we can't change const, so it doesn't become a problem. But having an array where we can't change i is also kind of bad, because then we can't get to the next items in the array. All right, so that was a bit more than what was on that one. Um, but now we can both add, remove, print out price and everything. We now have a really awesome shopping cart. So your boss might just ask you to have something that people can only add because then they have to buy things. I don't know. <laughs> There's no remove from that. <laughs> you want it, now you have to pay for it. That's a sure way to lose a business. Yeah. Um, so... All right, so the last one. 
read the following closely to ensure you call the function correctly. In order to analyze the product prices, we need to send the price of the products to a server. A function is available to you called send prices to server. You need to call this function with two arguments, an array of prices of the products, what array methods can we use here, and a callback function with a parameter. The parameter will be the confirmation text sent from the server. The callback function will be called when the data has been sent to the server. Console to log out the response from the server. So the first question, an array of prices of the products. So what array methods can we use to get only some part of the objects? Maybe. Yep. So one thing I don't really understand and they don't write here is when we should call this function, but let's just do it down here. Um, so let's get all the prices. So you set product.map products and then product.price, right? Yeah. And then we had a function called send prices to server that took prices and a callback. Yeah. The callback. Because it will not work like that because callback is not the same. Not defined. Yeah, this will, this will work because we're making a new callback. Okay. We're making the callback ourselves. So callback is literally a way of saying, call me back when you're done. That's where the name comes from. Hmm. Um, so we just create a new one here. Uh, confirmation. Then we just console.log the confirmation. So if we just do this, then everything blows up because I can't spell product. So I'm say it sends these prices and these prices were received. Awesome. That's what we had to do in that one. That was that whole exercise. Why it was not work with me until I defined the callback again in my folder? I don't know. Uh, I would have to look at the code to tell you that. Code in the, school. the what? My code in the school. I forget to copy it in my computer because I was working from the school. Yeah. Um. Because if you just write call back, uh, can you go back to the code how how you call it back? So did you just do this? Yeah. Yeah. Then you need to like somewhere create that call back. Yes, that's what I did. But that, like, we can just create it down here if we want. So anyway, I should define it called back. Yeah, you have to define it and give it, because what this does is it just calls that function, like we looked at a lot last time. Mm. All right. Any questions for this? Because that's actually finished this. I talked about that if you want, we can try looking at doing something like a fuzzy search. Uh, that's a bit more complex and we'll be going into actually doing some bit more advanced algorithms to calculate some sort of value that says whether or not something is correct enough. But how about we take a small break first? Um, so um, 10 minutes, so we'll be here again at six o'clock. I'm ready? Mm -hmm. okay. All right.